of June 8, 2023. To everybody out there in the virtual audience, sorry for the delay. We've had a few little technical problems here. So tonight, we're not going to be able to have a video relationship with you from Council Chambers, um, but we'll have audio only. Um, we can see you okay, and we can hear you fine, um, and we'll recognize you when you raise your hand during that part of the discussion. Uh, no, my bad. Let me retract that. This is going to be chat only from the audience, other than in the presenters. You need to be in the actual council chambers room to have a back and forth with the planning board members or staff. You can um, interact with us by chat. And Carolyn Miss, the planning office staff, and myself will be able to receive those. And then we'll um, put them out loud to the other planning board members so everyone is heard. Um, so that being said, um, today's planning, every planning board meeting usually starts off with a time for public comment. Um, and we start with people who are in the, the audience here. There's one person in our room here is the applicant for the main um, item on the agenda. Is there anyone out there in the Zoom who would like to make a comment that is not related to the situation on the agenda. So um, can I, oh, wait. I wanna clarify, um, there was a, com a question in the chat about being able to see the presentation. The presentation will be able to be viewed because there'll be a screen share. It's just the video monitor is not working in council chambers to project the room, but it will project the presentation and the audio. Um, and so chat comments can come in um, to the chair or myself, and um, those will be read during public comment. Okay. So hearing no public comment, um, we will open up tonight's hearing for uh, a site plan review to add a second detached unit by Bill Sweet and Valerie Gintis at 59 Lincoln Ave, Northampton map ID 25C051. And so does the applicant, well, first maybe we should, do we want to hear about the, uh, the earlier hearing today at the zoning board or? Um, 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 I can give that uh, uh, presentation either before or after, but the zoning board did grant the special permit for the change of use. And so that related to the proximity of the structure to the lot line, and it required a special permit because there were already existing nonconformities, and this is making essentially a worse nonconformity because it's coming the living space would come closer to the lot line. The zoning board did grant the permit. So your jurisdiction in this is site plan is about the technical aspects, not about the use or the location of the structure because the zoning board already uh, reviewed that piece of it. So you're looking at this 611 section for two family um, standards um, in your review. Very good, thank you. So does the applicant have a presentation? Uh, I'm happy to do my best. I would not say this is my area of expertise <laughs> in the slightest. Um, so we have, um, we've had our house um, on Lincoln Ave since 2005. We absolutely love our neighborhood. Uh, during COVID, we realized how very small our house was. Um, and so we did a series of renovations. Um, and one of those renovations was taking our two car plus garage and creating a rec room out of about two thirds of it, which was a lifesaver. Um, and so now we um, want to take the other th third of the existing structure, so not changing the footprint, and put in a kitchenette and a bathroom so that it can be a separate unit. Um, and so that is why we're here to answer questions and address any concerns the group may have. And can you put on the screen share your plans? Sure. Um, Yes. One second. Do you need help with that. Um, I 
um, uh, okay. Uh, hopefully this is what you're looking for. Um, the uh, white outline is the existing structure and the people door, as we call it, exists as well. Where we've put in the four windows currently is um, a wall and in the white space is our garage door. So essentially from the outside, what the change is, is the garage door will go away and we will have four windows um, in its place. So it'll be more attractive, certainly. Um, it'll have two egresses, it'll have light on all sides and more functional as a space. Do you need more details than that? picture of the existing building, do you? I do. Uh, do I have a picture? Do we, hold on. You might need to stop and then restart screen share. Um, I do in my text, hold on. Sorry to keep you all. Okay, we understand that, as you said, this is a normal procedure for you, so. <laughs> I usually try to seem more put together, at least. Um, okay. Is that why your co-applicant bill didn't come today? He should have. I'm awesome. realizing right now, <laughs> the moment where you're standing here thinking, I don't know how to do this. Um, uh, let me. I have it on my phone. Can I sh it's, show it to you visually? Yeah, no, it's probably OK. I had a chance to go by the site today and I saw the building. Um, so I, it's a basic garage. Let's go back to that picture that showed the garage door. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Bill, if you can um, share the picture with me. No. No, he no. can't. No. Okay. No. Garage. Okay. Okay. So I can pull this up from our site. This garage. Okay. So this is the the rendering we did of the current garage front. Mm -hmm. Does that mm -hmm. help? Yeah. Yep, and that's going to become a wall. Yep. So essentially, those four garage windows will move over, the door yeah. will go away. Yeah. Uh, how are you going to handle like the plumbing, the drainage and waste from the new bathroom? Yes, thank you. Um, we need to um, drill in our driveway down and we are connecting the pipes um across the driveway into our existing basement sewage okay. system okay um which then eventually ties to the street but the tie-in is going to go through the house through okay. the basement and then through our main sewer Waste system lines. yes great great Probably the same thing with the electricity is probably connected that way now. Also, we already have um, we already have solar panels on the garage, and we have a separate panel box for electricity that controls the um, solar panels and the electricity in that space, and it's all been brought up to code. Okay. Sub panel from the main house, probably. Yeah, probably rather than its own drop. Yep. Okay. We're getting there, Carol, going around the house. We're almost to the yeah. front. Yeah. There's, oh, there's the, the solar panel. Those are the electric panel. Right. Okay. 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 I think it's okay. okay. It's all right. Yep. Yeah. Um, other questions from... Uh, board members on this application. Have you had a couple of comments? You've seen those? Um, it's about the sewer. Yeah, yes. It's basically just about the, uh, the sewer line connection and then the water line connection. 
Uh, just want to make sure that you saw their uh, demo that we issued a couple of days ago. Yes, and we have um, in your files, our, our closest abutting neighbor wrote a letter for the files as well, which I think was sent to both to both boards tonight. Great. Um, and we have a builder who is fantastic and has done work in our house and does impeccable <clears throat> high quality work. So we're confident in his subs and his primary work. Can you see the builder? Scott Nickerson. Yep. He's Good. great, but you can't. Not till we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can you put it in the public it. record now. So I, yeah, right. <laughs> if if the board remembers about just about the time of COVID two years ago, uh two houses down came before us for a similar secondary unit. Yes. In this neighborhood. And you can actually see it from there. They're still working on that uh accessory potato unit. Barn? First time I met you, huh? The potato barn? No, no, it wasn't the potato that. barn. This is another one. So, so yeah, in our neighbor in our neighborhood, we have um, long skinny plots, which I learned had to do with oxen many years ago. It was hard to turn oxen around for farming, so the plots in our neighborhood were very long, so they could do a long row and then turn the oxen around. Um, so the houses are yeah. close together with long yards, things I don't need to know in life. Um, but we have we have converted our garage to this recreational room. Our neighbor next door does, and the neighbor next to them have has also done that. So um, two doors down is the non-conforming structure. It's two stories, much bigger. Ours is no change to the footprint of or the roof. It's just the change of use, which has triggered yeah. a variety of conversations. Good. If, if there's no other questions right now from the board, we'll turn it over to the public. All right, so we'd like to open it up for public comment now. If there's anybody in the audience who would, who's here in the audience in council chambers who'd like to speak for or against this project or anybody out in the Zoom room who would like to make a comment via chat, um, please let us know. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move back to the applicant. Any more questions? Before we move to close the public hearing, pretty straightforward. Okay. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Thanks. Second. Thank you. The motion has been made and seconded to close the public hearing, which means we can't ask you any more questions or the public. Um, so uh, any more discussion on that motion? All right. We'll go to a vote then. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Unanimous. All right. Any opposed? No, it's unanimous. Okay. Um, so thanks. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty straightforward change and something that we are really um, kind of promoting in the city. Uh, more dwelling units closer to the town. Uh, they have asked for a, a, a have they asked for a waiver or we're just not around the traffic study because they, of the small um they didn't address traffic mitigation um so i i recommended that this i mean this is a very small unit comparable to the accessory the four, previous accessory dwelling units that were allowed by right without providing traffic mitigation so you have the ability to exempt them from this mm -hmm. is, is what's is this one of those ones that's in the category that if it was connected, then it wouldn't even be a review? It would have been by right. It's just because it's detached. Okay. And normally we ask for a thousand dollars in lieu of uh, traffic mitigation, but in this situation, because it's so small, um, we're just going to forego that. Um, it's so small, the person couldn't even own a car, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know if that needs to be a condition or the minutes just state then that. That would be part of the decision. Okay. Yeah. All right. Other items, issues? All right. Hearing none. Is there a motion? Yep, I'll do it. Um, so I move that we approve the site plan review to add a second detached unit at 59 Lincoln Ave, Northampton, map ID 25C-051. Um, exempting the $1,000 traffic mitigation amount. Thank you. Thank you. Motions for May is there a second? Second. All right. 
Any discussion? We're all good. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. All right. Well, thank you for coming before us. I appreciate it. Yep. And I love our community. I love our street. And so thank you. Great. Bill, good seeing you. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Is it developed an ox with a tighter turning radius now? Is that the issue? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God>. Zero <laughs> radius ox. <laughs> uh, all righty. Um, we have another item of business that comes before the board, which is a review of... Uh, a zoning amendment. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to pull it up. Yep. I imagine the folks here in the room are here to kind of weigh in maybe on the, the flood insurance program, the national. Yep. I want to make sure you're in the right room. About the flood insurance program. Okay. All right. It's likewise in the corner. Okay. You'll let us know at the end whether it was possible to get any more information. <laughs> you will be eventually be able to ask questions. I don't know how much we'll be able to drill down to the details of your specific situation, but um, Carolyn is a wealth of information. If she doesn't answer them tonight, she or she'll point you to somebody else in the city who will help with that. Because certainly the, the, the planning office has been dealing with uh, flood zone regulations and zoning for quite some time now. Uh, no, I'm good, thanks. Um, I, I will save his words for later. Um, Okay, so I had my Adobe's not working, so I'm just going to go to the, um, uh, just grab the files from um, elsewhere, but to start the conversation. To start the conversation, this, so there's a zoning package in front of you that um, creates um, text changes that would create a, um, what we're referring to as a national flood insurance um, program overlay and a corresponding map that shows where the overlay will exist. Um, the text chain and, and the reason for this introduction is going this the zoning, both the text and the map will relate to and be exactly the same boundaries as our current special conservancy zone that covers the 100 year flood plain. Um, actually, the NFIP overlay will not cover as much as of the 500-year floodplain as um, our Special Conservancy Zone does. Um, the reason we need to uh, adopt these measures is so that we can be compliant with the flood insurance, national flood insurance um, requirements. And be and residents in Northampton can be eligible for insurance. So um, this is this specific language is coming from MEMA and FEMA, and we really don't have a choice uh, about adding it. But we're creating a separate layer because knowing down the road that there might be other changes that come in, it would just be easier to just plunk it into this special overlay instead of going in and trying to change every single reference to the special conservancy district and all the other districts in our zoning. So um it it require it's really and and what's interesting about this it's really all about buildings. So the insurance program only covers insurance um for buildings not parcels and it mm -hmm. and um there's a restriction for no new residential units are allowed in the floodplain in our current special conservancy district this overlay doesn't change any of the use restrictions that we currently have but it adds language about situations when someone files for a building permit and you're building below base flood elevation for example you have to, and if you're asking for what's deemed a variance from this program 
then you have to follow certain procedures and your insurance rates might go up if you're asking for a waiver or a variance, I should say, that's their language, um, from this program. So it's all really evaluated at the building level because that's what's being insured. Whereas our zoning is broader and we look at all kinds of activities that might happen in the in the floodplain or barns or things that aren't typically covered in the insurance um, program. So that's the that's what both of these ordinances do. And then we have to go, we want to make sure we reference this new text throughout the entire code. So there's some, you can see just minor insertions of see also this new section, because if someone's looking at what the requirements are in the special conservancy district, they also, sh um, or, the, um, or the floodplain overlay, we also want to make sure there's this other section that's now being adopted. And once we adopt this, we have to send it off to the state and then they'll say, okay, we can continue to provide insurance to residents in Northampton. So a lot of this language is prescriptive. It's all prescriptive. So I see like one, um, 350, 16, 11 base flood elevation data for subdivision proposals when proposing subdivisions or other developments greater than 50 lots or five acres. That's all them. That's all them because because our special conservancy doesn't allow any new right. residential. Right. Right. So it doesn't quite jive. Right. Okay. But we have to have that language. Right. So we're not getting rid of the other zone. It's just no. it's just too. It's on top zones. of yeah. Their zoning, their language doesn't trump ours. No, I mean it's almost in addition. It's in addition to, so, you know. You can make further constraints right we have more constraints as chris pointed out we don't allow new subdivisions however we have to just say that if there were a new subdivision ever then the nfip floodplain overlay standards theoretically they could go through a zoning variance right our, to get through our part of it and then this would apply. right So um, that's that's the basic um, uh, premise, and I can. I mean, it's the text is long. I don't know if you want me to go through could you, that. Could you just screen share the map for us? Yep. Um, just a minute. Okay. Main. We've had. Our zoning in place around the floodplain restrictions for 25, 35 years. Mm -hmm. And they've changed over time, yep. but the boundaries haven't really changed. I'm sorry, I'm just like spinning here. Okay. During my time, there's been a few buildings that have been built in the floodplain, but it was very restricted about how they were built and how they compensated for land that was disturbed somewhere else. Got to keep right. the same flood volume. Right. Right. So there's multi. So not only is there are there plan are there land use restrictions. There's also restrictions under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. So for building within the floodplain, and those are um, require what's called compensatory flood storage. If you're putting a mass in the floodplain, you have to compensate for that flood storage capacity that is no longer there somewhere else within the same reach of the river. And all of those regulations are under the Wetlands Protection Act and will st still remain in effect. Um, so we've got several layers of requirements and then this is on top of that. Um, right. So the, the, the insurance, call it International Flood Insurance Program. So is anything we're doing affect current insurance ability to get it i mean is it affecting the end user's ability to get or use insurance or is it yeah i get i get that the text is prescriptive and we're adopting it in uh -huh. um so that we're uh, compliant 
Um, but does it affect anything to the end user currently? Well, um, we've been told, so can you see that map? So this is very much like, this is all of our special conservancy zone too. Yeah. So we already have this covered, but we're creating this overlay map on top of this. Um, so over the years at various times, the flood insurance program has says to Northampton, well, you need to do this and this in order for residents in Northampton to be covered and be allowed to have insurance. Mm -hmm. And so we've made some of those changes over time. This is the biggest one, like they've revamped everything. And it was supposed to go through in 2018. We just kind of put it on the back burner because we we're like, you know, we're more restricted than this. Why do we need to do this? And then they keep knocking on the door saying, no, 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 you need to um, adopt this um, or, you know, you'll risk that um, residents who are in the floodplain and who want to get floodplain insurance. Okay. And, and then, and then um, so the things that came, um, so a few years ago, we had to establish a point person who was the flood, um, um, I forgot what the name of it was. Um, and so a specific person that would evaluate projects that come through. So the building commissioner is identified as that person. And then that person is also required to ensure that base flood elevation maps are presented every time a new project's built. And that was a new requirement um, that came in a few years ago. So, um, so that you know, survey work is done when new work within the floodplain is is proposed or is completed as well. Um, and what was the other thing? Was, oh, so some people have asked um, what um, whether this will affect their rates. We can't dictate that. We don't know. That's completely out. And then some people have asked whether they're going to be required to have flood insurance. Can they opt out? It's my understanding that um, it depends, it, you know, it's your own risk. You know, you buy insurance. However, sometimes when you buy a new property and you have bank financing, yeah. the bank mandates that you have flood insurance. And so um, if your house is, um, identified as being within the flood zone and flood ways and all of we that. We have no so, connection to like whether that's required or not. I mean, that could all it, change. Right. The and the other thing is this isn't really land use. I mean, this isn't like standard land use. This text is all about insurance coverage, risk, and all this stuff. Um, so. so what we're uh, potentially adopting is basically something that we have to adopt to allow our residents to be able to get and continue to get flood insurance if they wish to? Um, I think so. I don't want to be the expert on what their interpretation is going to be. It's either that or maybe the residents have to pay a lot higher premiums yeah. uh, or higher um, uh, insurance policy on their insurance policies <laughs> because we didn't. Yeah. yeah. So that has sometimes been the case, but I don't want to um assert that i understand exactly the ramifications of all of those the text in, we're removing a what could be a potential bureaucratic roadblock sounds like that yeah yeah right remind me of the process that the planning board is part of now the zoning sure uh, okay. so it's a it's a zoning amendment and um um what happens is the planning board holds a public hearing. Legislative matters will have to hold a public hearing as well. That's going to be next week. Then your recommendation, along with legislative matters recommendation, will go back to full city council. And then full city council is the legislative body that adopts any zoning regulations. So people, the public will have other chances to weigh in on this and ask questions at these different hearings throughout the city. A lot of this seems to fall under the bailiwick of the Conservation Commission, but I don't think they're really part of that process around a recommendation, right? Right. Because just because of the wetlands kind of flavor of um, these areas. Right. Okay. There's language in here that talks about that if you do get a variance, warning that there could be a premium on your insurance up to 25% of right higher like what is that called like 
they just give us that and we're supposed to say that yes we it's like we're supposed to on behalf of the in program go if that ever happens right on behalf of the program we're presenting to the public like this information what will yeah so if they like change that to like 50 percent, like we would have to change our zoning again yes and just if oh god well just from kind of a much higher view i thought because of uh all the flooding that's happening nationally and globally i thought the 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 the, the feds were certainly looking at not providing this kind of extensive insurance in the mm -hmm. same way as we've done in the past but it it just seems like they're moving along in the same way there's <laughs> So people will continue to build in the floodplain if they can locally and if if they can get insurance, which it seems like they can. Yeah, except this language seems to talk about increase in rates for those who ask for variances or waivers. So maybe, you know, in previous I'm speculating, but maybe across the country in other locations, people are granted permits in all sorts of floodplain areas. And this would come in and say, well, okay, your local jurisdiction may have approved that. And maybe you've shown that you should be getting this waiver, but your rates are going to go up to whatever it was. They have wildly different rates. Obviously, like they're having a failure of the reinsurance market in Florida right now. Uh, it's, it's not, we're not at the elevations where this, this is such a critical issue. <laughs> luckily, so. Right. Well, this does talk about the base elevation that you need to build that in the floodplain. And if you get a variance to build lower than that, then your rates could go up. Yeah. Okay. Which makes sense. Thank you. You want to <clears throat> save above that, that elevation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, I don't think we need to go. There's about eight pages of this. Most of them are kind of very small textual changes, some of a lot have to do just with the uh, acronym of the NFIP and that language of the National Flood Insurance Program overlay. And adding um, definitions to all of yeah. their um, you know, floodplain, functional, functionally dependent uses, historic structures, yeah. new construction, you know, yeah. all that stuff. So um, maybe at this point we should open to the public and ask uh, if they have some comments that perhaps we can answer tonight, um, but give you an opportunity to talk some more about this or understand where the city's going and after this there are some chats ah okay and after the people in the room um have their comments then we'll go out to the zoom who would like to go first if you just state your name come on up to the podium and state your name and your address that would be great <laughs> welcome thank you never did this before my name is Lisa Schmidt. I live at 634 Riverside Drive. And I'm asking a question on my behalf of myself, but also a neighbor who couldn't be here tonight, who um, I think the word overlay was confusing. And we were wondering whether it meant the map that dictates what the flood zone is considered is changing. Um, and if it were how, and is there a way to compare the old map with the new map? And they're so like, it sounds like this is more a technical thing that you're discussing as an the overlay, which is a language overlay federally dictated, but we were wondering whether it had to do with the map itself. Uh, there, there will be this new overlay map that's created that's reflective of the FEMA mapped 100 year flood elevation. So, even so you can't uh, necessarily look at the map and see your house whether it's in or out because the flood elevations are based on on the ground data so you actually have to go and pull the data and understand in space where on riverside drive your house is located relative to the map the actual control points on the ground of where that flood line is so um those the FEMA has not changed the flood boundaries in Northampton. However, there there has been a review, um, and we understand there may be some modifications to Northampton's flood mapped floodplain. Um, 
if that happens, that won't affect this change because it's really just identifying that. I mean, ultimately we could shift the lines and the edges of this map, but really what's dictating the boundary is the actual determined flood um, elevation on the property itself. And you have to find that by doing a survey um, with, you know, on the ground to find out exactly where that line is. It's probably most similar to what you would go through if you went to Conservation Commission and mapped the wetlands where it's sort of mapped, the state maps them, but you have to go out there and actually figure out and have someone who knows what they're doing map the boundaries. I can put a stake in the ground and say, this is what this point is. And this, and right. then you look, is this, is your house on this side or that side of that line? As opposed to using this picture on the screen to determine where it is. And insurance companies do that too, I yeah. I think. So. Well, as far as I know, I only know about my property, not my neighbors. It was not considered floodplain when I applied for insurance for my house originally. But there is a proposal going through the DPW at the moment, which is to change the riverfront to shore up the bank and move a sewer line um, because there's been some bank erosion happening. And so they're, they're proposing to grade my land in a way that it wasn't before. And I f I'm wondering if that is going to be then surveyed in a new way and considered floodplain because it used to go out and have a big drop and they're proposing a gradual uh, slope. Interesting. So in a very practical way, you think the Mill River might be able to edge up towards your house, whereas before it was stopped by the bank. <clears throat> I don't think well, yeah, and typically that kind of thing doesn't change the floodplain boundary. I mean, so the flood water is going to come up and it'll top the bank, or if it's a more gradual bank, it'll just creep up where, um, so I, that those things don't, I mean, that's part of the Conservation Commission review to determine if there's an impact to the flood storage capacity on a property, then they have to compensate for that elsewhere. But that's the evaluation that they're going to be putting into the review or should have, I know it's been just submitted, um, to um, evaluate those kinds of things. Is this changing? Is this taking up storage capacity or isn't it? And so they're going to, they, I haven't looked fully at the plan, so I can't tell you if they address that, but that's certainly one of the requirements. So those would be good meetings for you to attend. Unfortunately, the Conservation Commission meetings, right? If they open it up to a public hearing. Right, this wouldn't you know. address that one yeah. way or the other. Yeah, but I think there's also a larger question of this is tying, this is creating a new overlay that is coincident with the firm map, the, the FEMA map, which happens to also be pretty much the same as our current underlying district. There is nothing in this that says that FEMA can't, and they probably will, change the map over time. And they do that on some kind of cyclical basis for all different communities. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does that mean we have to incorporate a new map when that happens? Uh, maybe. Issue? Yeah. But it will be easy enough to do because but we'll just have to in. Yeah. Maybe, and we can decide whether to change the underlying zoning right. or not. Right. Yes. And just for the record, FIRM stands for Federal Insurance Rate Map. Right. Right. So, and this is all federal, right? It's not the city of Northampton at all. And we can't. And the other, yeah, the other piece of it is we're talking in your particular situation, it's land. So you don't need to get insurance for land. You, the insurance is only given for buildings and, you know, occupied structures, essentially. And how would I find out when those conservation meetings? You'll get a notice if you're an abutter or uh, if it's on your property, you'll get a notice in the mail. All right. Thanks very Good. much. Yep. Anyone else in the audience? You're good? Okay. We're all learning a little bit tonight, for sure. Um, and Carolyn, we have some people on chat. Yes. So Andrea said, currently my neighborhood on Riverbank Road is zoned Special Conservancy, which already has very particular rules and regulations regarding the building. Most of the neighborhood is under the floodplain designation that would require federal insurance. If one has a mortgage, we talked about there are few houses, including my own, 
that are at an elevation that does not require insurance is this suddenly going to change? So I think we just talked about them. Um, Bob Richards, as far as a new as new construction goes, we have been saving money over the years with the idea of trying to build a carport, which would most likely be allowed with our zoning. Not 100% sure if we would have to apply for a variance, but that was our idea. Is that going to change? Are we going to be penalized because we did not save money quickly enough to already have built something? Um, so this relates to the fact that this isn't changing the rules around building structures in floodplains currently in Northampton. Um, so if you're in the floodplain and you want to build a carport, you might not be able to do that. You have to you have to do a whole engineering study to show um, that you're not um, that one you're building to withstand the forces of floodwaters. Two that you're if you have to provide compensatory flood storage for that. So. All of that stays in place. But this new overlay we're talking about wouldn't change your ability to build that carport one way or the other. This overlay right. will just say, if you build a carport, your insurance might go up. Yeah. Maybe. Right. <clears throat> but that's a force that's outside of the city. Of right. Right. Okay. Sue uh, said, chatted, as far as I could see, the map posted online did not show the relationship between the overlay and streets and neighborhoods, is that information available? Um, yes, we have um, we have the maps on our website that show this current special conservancy district, which is the same boundary as this. And so you can add whatever layers you want onto this, uh, onto your maps. Um, and the MassGIS is usually pretty good about updating with current, I mean, I don't know that they have yeah. yet, but yeah, you can overlay our GIS information with stuff from the state and feds right so fema the fema map would be on there yeah theoretically yeah i mean all those things have to be verified though They're not to the inch yeah. right so you would know again if your house was in or out it's just conceptual um andrea says the map as it appeared on my screen did not have any identifying characteristics like streets lots or buildings from that, it was impossible to determine the boundaries of the areas being discussed here. The map just showed the outer boundary of Northampton and water areas is blue. So similar issue, I mean, um, we could revise for city council, certainly the areas um, that are, uh, I mean, to show more clearly some landmarks. Um, again, it sort of, it covers this map just to describe more clearly. It covers a, about a hundred feet on either side of every perennial stream in the city. Um, and the, of course, the Connecticut River floodplain that comes up almost up to Bridge Street. Um, so that's the big blue swath along the Connecticut River is all the sort of low lying um, farmland below Bridge Street. Um, and then otherwise it's along the uh, Mill River and other perennial streams throughout um, the city. So many times there are backyards that are within the this area, but not structures. Sometimes there are structures, um, but particularly as it goes, winds through the city, it's um, a lot of Can we land. Add an attachment that's just like an overlay of our street map. Sure. With that, and just put a big like for reference only or something on. Yeah. It. Yep. So it's useful for people. And folks out there, you can go, you can search for Mass GIS, and you'll find a an online viewer, and that's where you can you can put in your address. It'll go right to your house, and there's different layers you can turn on to see. I'm looking to see, see that stuff. <laughs> right. Well, they have to have the, the FEMA stuff. Yeah. Even makes it hard. So just a clarification, I think we answered this about the um, 100 and 500 year elevations are not changing. We talked about that. Um, and riverfront protection zones still stay in place under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, again, from Andrea, for a homeowner, rather than a developer, how does this change our ability to maintain and improve our properties? Is there a specific list of um, new items added to the ST zone that will affect our ownership, regular insurance, or require flood insurance? So I think we talked about this. And of course, development in the city is um, blind to who's doing it. Development is development. So whether it's a homeowner or a developer or a builder or a builder on behalf of a homeowner. Um, so this doesn't affect anything um, 
and in terms of what's restricted or what's allowed because we have the underlying zoning, um, this is just being added on top and it doesn't, there's no way for anybody in the city to understand the insurance rates and how will that be affected because it's not something the city develops and it oversees. It's someone who lives in the floodplain, what they think is the floodplain, wants to do any kind of construction or building or improvements. They just still need to file an application with the building inspector and go through whatever those regulations and permitting are. Yep. Um, so a couple more, um, Riverbank Road flood insurance um, is through FEMA and reasonable, required by our lender, as we talked about that. Um, and regular homeowners insurance is not affected. So it's really just, it's just, this is just about the flood insurance piece. Um, 85, Andrea at 85 River Bank elevation does not currently require flood insurance since we receive a notice for the meeting. I'm assuming we're in the new district. Okay, so, um, um, so even if you don't have insurance, your property, we notified all the people in that map because we're required to by law when we make a map change. So um, many people received this notice. Um, even if the backyard, the very corner of their property had this map on it or had a section of floodplain on it, those people got notified of this. That doesn't mean that anything is changing for their property. And in fact, for the most part, not much is changing. Um, and so that's why people receive notice. Um, but this, that doesn't mean that things are changing for the property. Um, okay. Um, is there somewhere to find a simplified version of the changes and what they mean rather than trying to interpret the official language? Um, so, um, I guess that's what this hearing is about <laughs> because we have to have the specific language as it's going to be adopted, but Sarah Lavalley in my office and, or I can be available between now and the time council takes this up to try to explain further. Thank so you. I'm just verifying they do have it on the mass GIS website. They do qualify that it's, it's transcripted from paper maps so again you can't like rely on any of this yes, right and for a long time before it was digitized all we had was the, the scanned yeah. version of the paper map and then of course that was really still download those on FEMA. yeah and those are from 1978 i think so, generation yeah so so just to re reiterate Carolyn's last response, yeah, for many of us, the language and zoning amendments, and especially federal zoning amendments can be a little daunting, um, but but it is what it is in that kind of language. So if you need some help in interpreting that or you know aligning it with your own personal situation, please get in touch with Carolyn or Sarah Lavalley, who works with the Controversy Commission. I think that's the end of the chats. Often your Great. amateur also will know a lot about this. <laughs> Especially down in Florida. <laughs> or in the seaport. Why they have don't get me started on the seaport. In Boston. Oh, in Boston. In Boston. Okay. Oh. All right. Um <laughs> still okay out there? We're, we're good? Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board for Carolyn? We're probably looking for a recommendation to right. uh, move this on to the uh, Legislative Matters Committee. I think David had a good suggestion of uh, maybe for the legis that we recommend with our recommendation that a better kind of slightly more detailed overlay of the city streets goes with. Um, so. so I think that... Um... I think you would make sort of two separate, com one comment and a recommendation because your recommendation is going to full city council. What do you think about this change? So it's about the map change and the text. You could also suggest that um, a map that, I mean, 
it would be uh, uh, we will develop them app, yeah. but okay. so I don't know that you need to make okay. that as a recommendation. Right. It would just help the conversation probably yeah. for the counselors for the public. Right. Yep. All right. Any more discussion about the text or the map changes? No. All right. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Public hearing. I think it's public. Yes, hearing. it is public yeah. hearing. I would like to move to close the public hearing. Thank you. Second. All right. Motion has been made and seconded by David. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? And is there a motion to recommend this to the city council as we discussed with, I don't think, any edits at this point from our end? <clears throat> I move we recommend for approval, please. Second. Second. Bye. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Well done. Thank you very much, Carolyn, for all your explanations and descriptions. Thank you for you too. You seem to know a little bit more about some of the implications of this zoning. So that was very helpful. Um, and thanks for coming and sharing tonight with us.